Welcome everyone to this press conference from the 47th annual meeting of the World Economic Forum here in Davos. Welcome to all of you here in the room. Welcome to our audience on the live stream. And of course, a particular welcome to my panelists here, which uh, probably don't need an introduction here, but I'll do it anyways. Um, we're very happy to be joined uh, by uh, Enrique Mereles, the Minister of Finance of Brazil. And we're also joined by Ilan Goldfein, who's the governor of the Central Bank of Brazil. And uh, you didn't come here to hear from me, but you came to hear from the gentleman. So without further ado, Minister, um, give us a brief update on the situation in Brazil, please. Okay. Uh, <coughs> there are some uh, basic themes which are being discussed here at the forum uh, these days. Uh, one of them, which uh, is one of the, uh, which is polarizing uh, uh, substantially, is the question of the middle class uh, in the developed countries, which uh, is angry and voting accordingly uh, as a result of a perception of not shared income. In summary, the result of the prosperity created by globalization is not being shared equally. There is a concentration uh, at the top, and etc. Uh, basically, I pointed out that in the case of Brazil, we are in a different uh, point of development in the sense that uh, we are not uh, earning or enjoying the profits or the results of a fully integrated globalization. We are still a closed economy, and uh, with uh, until now, uh, uh, somewhat level, uh, higher than accepted level of government intervention in the economy. And then the challenge for Brazil now is number one, uh, make the basic reforms uh, as you have described uh, in other fora, uh, and uh, have the country growing at higher rates, uh, and uh, then creating jobs, which is what is more important for Brazil now, uh, job creation because they have very high rate of unemployment. In addition to that, we also have in Brazil something that some of the developed countries don't have, which is a safety net. In the case of Brazil, both a familia and all their social programs, that they, uh, the other countries, the rich countries lack some of them, not all. The Europeans tend to have it, the Americans don't. But in summary, uh, we do have tremendous challenge, we do have a very high unemployment, we must create jobs, and evidently we must be sure that we do all create jobs for the lower level income uh, workers uh, particularly. And having said that, uh, I think that it came uh, out clearly uh, what our challenges are and what we are doing uh, in order to face that challenge, but drawing the difference between the several levels uh, of uh, problems and the several levels of uh, development in the sense of uh, the developed countries, which the, 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 the developing one or emerging who are taking very strong advantage of globalization, uh, and the ones who are not or have not taken advantage of that globalization, which is the case of Brazil, then we have to open more, and evidently we are on the other side. We want to take advantage of the globalization, take advantage of the fact that we have uh, uh, or could have, we should have a lower cost of production uh, as soon as we have the labor reform implemented, et cetera, et cetera, and all the other uh, uh, productivity uh, reforms. Thank you, Minister. Governor Goldfein, over to you. Um, uh, in order to take this advantage of the globalization, you need to do the reforms in order to do, and I think we are in the process of doing them. Uh, not only the fiscal reforms that were approved and were sent to Congress, we have been doing microeconomic reforms. There are issues uh, on uh, uh, working on the infrastructure investments. And on the side of the, of the, of the central bank, we have been 
Uh, we have been working on uh, reducing inflation. As you know, in Brazil, we had uh, a shock. We have uh, uh, events that brought, at the same time, uh, lower activity and higher inflation. And we have been dealing with this uh, bad outcome mm -hmm. uh, in the last year. Uh, we are now in a position which is much better than last year. Uh, we've seen inflation going down from 11%, 10.67 actually, to 6.3. So it's a major decline in inflation in just one year. And we are also have uh, been working on uh, what we're calling anchoring expectations. Which is basically, uh, that people will look at the future and see that inflation in the next uh, year, two years, three years, is already on its way to the target. I'm saying it because beyond the reforms and the investment infrastructure, the microeconomic reforms, uh, the central bank can start the easing process, and that may help us also in terms of the uh, recovery of the economy. Uh, we, we expect the economy to recover this year, uh, have positive numbers, and that is quite important for us. With this, I will pass back your... Thank you very much. Um, without further ado, um, we have a full house here today. Let's open the floor for, for Q&A. Um, we have a microphone, so for the sake of our online audience, if you could uh, wait till the microphone reaches you and you could state your name and organization, please. I think we have a question from the lady over there. Microphone is on the way. Um, yes, hello. My name is uh, Marin Peters from Swiss Public Radio. Uh, my question would be, how worried are you about the strong and even increasing dollar? Thank you. Can you repeat the last thing? How worried we are about? About the strong dollar. The strong dollar. US strong dollar. Um, let me start and then yeah. you, you compliment. I, uh, uh, we, uh, we, are, we have a floating exchange regime, and the floating exchange regime is a buffer. That's our first line of defense. A strong dollar means that our currency will fluctuate. We have, we've seen immediately after the US elections, we have seen the, our currency depreciate. But since then, since the, the first days of the, of the elections until now, we, are, we basically saw a complete reversal of the, of the depreciation. And one of the reasons is that uh, the strong dollar comes with uh, the perception that it may be the case that the growth will be higher in the world because of possible some fiscal expansion. Uh, but it also meant for some of the emerging markets that commodity prices have gone up. In the case of Brazil, some of our commodity prices went up. And that meant that uh, beyond our reforms and then our issues that we are advancing in the country, we are also having some uh, benefits from the fact that the strong dollar uh, is a consequence of the fact that the, the world is seeing some perspective of more expansion and therefore more growth and maybe more higher commodity prices, which means that for us is, is could, could, could limit the strong dollar effect. Uh, in summary, uh, we, uh, we are not uh, particularly concerned with the foreign exchange rate, uh, giving you a, a direct answer for the reasons uh, that the governor has mentioned that we do have a uh, free float and exchange regime and and uh, we appreciate that and we we think that that's the best way to manage the economy. We don't have any kind of targets or bans or whatever. Uh, and having said that, uh, I think that w w what it was also clear from his comments that, that we have in international factors and we have domestic factors uh, influencing the foreign exchange rate. Uh, of the local currency, the real, against the dollar, and other currencies. Then, if we take the dollar alone, which is definitely the, the reserve currency, uh, what we are witnessing in Brazil is that the domestic factors so far are uh, offsetting, or in, in some cases, as it was the case in the last months, even prevailing over 
the international factors. Why? Because of the strengthening of the uh, Brazilian economy as, uh, as the, the basic reform, but particularly because Brazil is coming out of a deep recession and, have, and has this year uh, uh, forecast for uh, already a sustainable growth path uh, for the next years as well. In summary, uh, this is the, 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 our approach about, uh, over the, about the foreign exchange rate. Thank you. Uh, we have a question from the lady here and then uh, from the colleague from Reuters, if we can get those two questions together. And we've noticed that in the past... Excuse me, could you state your name uh, and organization yeah, for the yeah, sake of our China online business audience? News. Uh, with China Business News. And we have noticed that um, the British, uh, uh, Brazil central banks are actually among very few um, central banks who, are, who kept cut uh, interest rate hike in the past two years because you've got a fighting high inflation. But we can notice that since this year, you cut the um, interest rate by uh, 75 BP, which is a shock to the market because we expect like 50 basis point. But among the uh, rising prices, for example, global commodities and oil prices, are you still worried about your inflationary pressure or something? Thank uh, you. So interest rates and oil. Let's get the question from uh, the lady from Reuters, please. So I should answer afterwards? Oh, if you wish, go ahead. Yeah, let me, let me answer this and then we can get to the, to the, to the, the question. Uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, uh, we, we were uh, fighting the high inflation, uh, securing that we enter a path where we are going go to go to the target. Uh, that was, uh, that was uh, something that... Uh, we managed to achieve. As you know, we, we always uh, have to keep uh, working on that. It's a continuous job. But the decision to cut interest rates that you mentioned by 75 basis point is solidly based on the fact that uh, we anchor expectations and inflation is finally uh, going, going down. Uh, regarding the, the surprise you mentioned, it is, it is it is basically the, the decision to intensify it uh, was, uh, was decided by the factors that uh, accumulated uh, evidence over the last, uh, the last uh, month, a month or so, and uh, uh, they basically appointed us that uh, we could afford not only a point 50 basis point, but we could afford a 75 basis point. If inflation is anchored, and, if, and current inflation is going down, and the economy is still yet to recover, this calls for um, intensification of monetary policy. An intensification of monetary policy. The, 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 the oil prices, uh, today we have a price mechanism that will adjust the oil prices, but it takes into account not only the oil price, but also the exchange rate. So if it happens that when commodity prices go up, the exchange rate goes down, sometimes they may even cancel each other. So uh, if you are a commodity producer and commodities go up, you are less concerned because uh, you are the producer. So that, 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 that limits a little bit the, the increase in price. Thank you. Please. My question is similar, but when you, call, when you say intensification of the current situation calls for an intensification of monetary policy, could you elaborate on that a little bit? Because uh, what would you like to see, uh, to, see uh, to continue with uh, rate cuts of this magnitude that you have done? Uh, we have stated that uh, we have entered a new pace, which means that this pace of 75 basis point is our new pace. Uh, and, but as you know, a uh, new pace at some point uh, may change, and if it changes, it changes because of inflation expectations, inflation forecast, our own forecast, not only on the market, and uh, level of activity and the risk factors, uh, external, domestic risk factors, all of this will be taken into account. But we have entered into a new pace. Thank you. Um, the gentleman with the red tie. Your question, please. Yeah, hi, my name <coughs> is Andrew Barden with Bloomberg News. Mr. Morelli, as you spoke about how, in terms of domestic markets, the, the, the uh, domestic conditions are prevailing over international conditions. Um, and, and I was wondering if you felt there was still room for Brazilian assets, such as the real or the stock exchange, to make further appreciations 
in 2017, um, or as you kind of you know, carry out your models for the coming year, whether you're factoring much more appreciation or what your view is on that? Well, uh, we don't have uh, a specific uh, forecasts for uh, asset uh, values. Uh, and having said that, uh, we do see a continuation of the imp improvement of the fundamentals in Brazil, in the sense that there are still some basic reforms to be approved, like the Social Security reform, which is uh, going to be decided by Congress uh, uh, during the next months. We have uh, other reform, labor, et cetera, et cetera. And also we have a very important factor, as we mentioned, is the recovery of the economy. We are coming out of the recession. And as soon as the, 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 uh, the level of economic activity shows more and more signals of actual growth, uh, all of that together, together with the, the success of the central bank in bringing inflation down to target and all of that, I think that all of that will continue to uh, improve the fundamentals, and evidently that's an important part of the asset uh, pricing uh, and, and formation. But then having said that, evidently we have international uh, factors, we have uh, all kind of specific factors uh, affecting uh, ev every specific market, then we talk about the fundamentals, which give basis for all of that, rather than specifically the stock market index or the foreign exchange rate. Thank you. Any more questions from the floor? Yes, uh, if you could get the microphone here to the first row. Thank you. Hello, <laughs> Sandra Frope from Broadcast. Uh, just to check, the expectations uh, from Brazil to G GBP will be re uh, revived in how, how long? Yeah, we, uh, we are uh, going to uh, make our uh, review, which is a regular one, uh, in about uh, 10 days uh, time, two weeks, 10 days, two weeks time, and then we will be analyzing exactly uh, the, l the, the way uh, the indicators today are suggesting uh, the forecast for the 2017 growth and, and 2018. And having said that, the important point that we are uh, addressing is the fact that uh, since we had this deep recession, uh, that means that we start growing from a very low basis. And that means that even with uh, a, a very substantial growth, as we forecast, uh, comparing, for instance, last quarter of 2017 over the, the last quarter of 2016, uh, we are expecting to have about 2% growth quarter, last quarter over last quarter. Evidently, if we compare average against average, since we are coming, beginning from a very low basis, the year uh, 2017, uh, this number, the average against average, tend to be lower. But we think more important than that is the growth at the margin and the job creation, et cetera, which comes with that and the level of activity, et cetera, which I think that that's going to be clearly perceived um, by uh, the average uh, population by the second half of uh, 2017. Thank you. We have a follow-up question here uh, in the first row. Um, both gentlemen, I have a sort of a general question about the state of the world. Um, what is your impression now? I mean, there's this feeling, after yes, especially after yesterday's speech by Ch the Chinese president, that there is a sort of a shift in the tectonic plates of the world. I mean, the whole thing has, uh, the narrative seems to have changed. Here is, uh, with, the with the developing world pushing for more globalization, whereas in previous years it was the Western world asked, telling the developing world we need more, more globalization. What has changed, in your view, and how, what is this going to lead to? Let me start. In, uh, uh, I think the developing economies, emerging markets, uh, have benefited in general from globalization, uh, which means that uh, we all support uh, the continuation of that. Uh, 
Minister Merrill has mentioned the middle class and how is the middle class in developing economies have uh, benefited from uh, from the, from that. In the case of Brazil, there was quite a bit of uh, uh, um, increase in the middle class, benefits of the middle class in the last decades. So that has been quite important and it's reflected in the positions that uh, that you mentioned of emerging markets and that Minister Merrill has mentioned at the beginning. Uh, uh, we continue to support globalization because it has benefited our uh, our economies and our middle class. Minister, you want to add to that? Yes, uh, absolutely. I, I think that uh, at the end of the day, globalization is beneficial to everyone, uh, including uh, the, the developed economies. I think that uh, as uh, we have pointed out in some of these meetings, uh, if you take the uh, U.S., for instance, where this problem is, is clearer, uh, the question of the develop the problem of the developed countries with the, the globalization, indeed, uh, you have the the uh, cheap imports, etc., which on one hand um, uh, eliminate some American jobs, but evidently the growth generated by that and the shift in the economy to high technology and all of that and services create all kinds of jobs and the, net, the bottom line is the low level of unemployment in the US. In addition to that, uh, you have the whole, uh, the whole population taking advantage of lower prices, which comes as a result of more efficiency in the economy. Uh, but in having said that, the, 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 the group of uh, people who think uh, in a country like that or in parts of Europe, they, they are not receiving the benefits of globalization uh, as it is the case of other segments. That's a problem to be dealt specifically by uh, those governments in terms of creating compensations or safety nets or whatever uh, it's necessary, or training, even better, training, uh, skill improvement for people to move up in, in the, the payment scale. In the case of um, the emerging markets, definitely uh, globalization is, has been positive. In the case of Brazil specifically, what we have to do is, as we said, uh, reform the economy to take more advantage of globalization uh, because this was not the case so far because Brazilian growth in the past was very much based only in the domestic market. We have to take advantage as other emerging economies have done and we are moving toward that direction. Thank you very much. We have time for maybe one last question. Yes? Can we get the microphone? Thank you. I've got a follow-up question is on a Fed interest rate hike because we have see that the uh, EME's capital outflow is not that serious as we expected in the last December and the market now has priced in like three or two rate hike this year so how do you comment on the resilience of uh, Brazil against this normalization process will, will you use your um, like forex is a uh, reserve to prop up your currency if necessary um, there we've seen the normalization of the uh, conditions in the United States as part of the of a normal process. The global economy is recovering. The U.S. economy, in particular, has recovered first. Uh, we've seen this uh, process as a normal process. It has been, it seemed to be gradual, which is something that uh, is, uh, in my view, a good sign. It is gradual, it's sustainable, it is something that uh, the world should expect because it makes uh, uh, interest rates uh, in general more normal than they were in the last eight years. So in, it's, it's at the end, it's, it's not a bad news, it's good news for the world. On your question, if we're gonna use reserves or not, we, we use them, uh, basically we have been intervening using instruments like the swaps that we have issued, which are backed by the uh, amount of reserve we have 20 percent of GDP in reserve, so we can uh, we can use our instance, but we use them for to give liquidity to provide <coughs> moments of uh, of stress. As we mentioned before, the first line of defense is the currency. The currency floats, and this will continue to be the case. 
Uh, in addition to that, I would like to add that objectively, uh, in Brazil, we are witnessing a uh, net inflow of capital. Uh, and, and actually, the, the forecast for the future, as it was clear in, in other questions, is whether this inflow, the net inflow, because of the recovery of the economy, because of the foreign investment in the Brazilian economy, which is being attracted, very attractive, uh, whether the, the trend is not in another direction. Uh, we are, the, the, the bottom line is that, as opposed to what's happening with some emerging economies, we are not witnessing a, 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 a flight of capital which is worrying or, or propping the, the, the Brazil to use reserves to, uh, to hold the currency, or the, uh, exactly the other way around. I mean, we are in a, in, a, in that regard, on a balanced position, our account, current account balance is, is, is well, uh, uh, well along the lines with uh, the past, the history, et, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and in having said that, uh, as, as I mentioned, now we are in a recovery, the economy is beginning to grow, and then the trend is uh, for uh, investors to have more opportunities and the conversations we have had here uh, during the last days at the forum, we have uh, gotten indications for, for, from several uh, large corporations who have some investment in Brazil and now they are thinking about uh, investing substantially more, exactly for all these reasons. In summary, in have, re, besides the fact that we do have a free floating foreign exchange regime approach, as the government elaborated on it, etc., we are on a specific situation today, uh, which is uh, it's not one of concern for us. The, just to give two numbers here to complement this, uh, the FDI uh, is running around 4.4 percent of GDP in Brazil. And the current account deficit is around a little bit higher than 1%. So FDI is 4.4, current account deficit is 1.1. So it's a big, uh, one is almost four times the other. Thank you very much. And now it's my turn to add a third number. It is uh, 1 o'clock <laughs> and 30 minutes, which means we're concluding this press conference here. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you for being here. And a special welcome, a special thank you um, to Minister and, and Governor. Thank you very thank much. Thank you very much. Good. Thank you.